<laughs> All right. God is good. Amen. Uh, yesterday I had a sermon ready, and it was not a Mother's Day sermon. And Norma's like, you know, what about Mother's Day? And it was, it was uh, dealing with um, how to deal with intimidation, which I'll share next week. The Lord put a Mother's Day message on my heart, the, so I was busy yesterday preparing that. Um, and, and the title of this message is The Mama Bear. The Mama Bear. Godly mothers are a blessing from God. They nurture, comfort, and love their children. Just like a mama bear, they will protect and provide for their children. They will even give their lives for their children. There's a poem that I, I got yesterday that I'm going to read to you. And, and the title is, The Love of a Mama Bear. Mama Bear always watches over her cubs as she nurtures them with an abundance of love. She guides and provides for them all the time. Her cubs are always on her mind. She protects them throughout the day and night. For them... She would even give her life. So devil beware if you mess with the cub of a mama bear. Amen. And, and you know, um, Norma was sharing about prayer. And how she, you know, when, when the enemy is attacking her children, how she kind of gets, something rises up on the inside of her. She calls it the mama bear. Amen. <laughs> And uh, she prays with such authority. And, she, and she's directing it against the enemy. And she's like, you know, really, uh, I, 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 if I was a devil, I would run. Let's put that <laughs> Because it, it's, you know, there's ferociousness in her prayers when it comes to dealing with the devil. And we all need to be ferocious when we deal with the devil. Don't, don't be gentle. You know, and I've heard men take authority over the devil, and you know we do a pretty good job. But I'll tell you, you mess with a with a woman's children, you know, a mama's mama bear's cubs, and man, they will pray with an authority, amen. amen. So you know, it's just uh, incredible. I know that when I've heard Norma pray for me, it isn't the same as when she prays for them. <laughs> <laughs> it's still good, but you know. Amen. <laughs> Why don't you turn with me real quick to, to Matthew chapter 15? Matthew 15. We're gonna be talking about women who who um they they minister to their children. They 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 rescued. They literally rescued their children. And um, you know, in Matthew 15, starting in verse 21, this is about a woman who would not be denied. A woman who would not be denied. A mother who would not be denied. And it says here, verse 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to a region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. This mother's heart, I, you, could just, you could just hear it. You know, she was crying out for the life of, 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 her, of her daughter. And she was saying, God, you know, she's saying, I need help. She, she was fighting for the life of her little girl. But, but he answered and said not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. I mean, she was giving everything she had for her daughter. She's saying, Lord, help me. Any moms in here ever have a prayer like that? Yeah. Lord, help me. The anguish 
You know, you know your child's hurting. You know that, that the only hope that they have is a touch from God. And you cry out. You say, Lord, help me. Help There's no other place to go. Help them. Help, help me. Them. Amen. Hallelujah. But he answered and said, is it, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. She said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. She, she was a woman that could not be denied. I'll tell you, the, the prayers of a mama bear, of the prayers of a mom who's, who's crying out desperately for their children, they're powerful prayers. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. And she, by, her, by her pursuing and not giving up, her daughter was healed. Her daughter was delivered. That's just the heart of a mama bear. They don't give up. That the, they'll, they'll fight in the realm of the Spirit. Yes, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, powers, mice, and demeans. We wrestle against the unseen forces that are coming against us, coming against our families. And moms really have a gift for that. You know, when, when we have um, Monday night prayer, I'm one of the, me and maybe a couple other guys, but mostly it's the ladies. Mama bears come to prayer. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Where's all the men at? We need to be getting busy. See, godly mothers, what they do is they impart their faith to their children. In Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I like what it says in 2 Timothy 1, 5. It says, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you. He's, that, this is Paul speaking to his son in the faith, Timothy. He said, which dwelt, which dwelt first in your grandmother, uh, Lois, and in your, in your mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded is in you also. So the grandmother passed it down to the mother, and the mother passed it down to her son. Amen. They, they, they pass it on. And that's what, what moms do. Moms will pass down their faith to their children. That, and, and their children, moms make a mark. And praise God, godly moms make a godly mark on their children. Amen? Amen. God is so good. I like what it says here. This is a, a short message today. Because I really believe the whole service has been a message. Amen. 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 A godly mother's family will call her blessed. Amen. A godly mother's family will call her blessed. In Proverbs 31, starting in verse 25 through 28, it says, Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. And on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household. That's a mama bear. Amen. And does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also. And he praises her. Amen. So, husbands, we should be praising our wives. And not just on Mother's Day, but we should be praising them. Every day. They, they're, they're the ones who are fighting for our family. Amen? Amen. Praise God. There's a, a couple stories of the Old Testament in 2 Kings. A couple stories of 2 Kings. And um, as I was praying about the message and meditating on the Word, the Lord just kind of brought this, this out to me. And, and the first one, it's, it's in 2 Kings 4, starting in verse 1. So the first one is a widow. And it's talking about a widow with, with two sons. And this woman was, she was um, 
She had nothing. No money. They were in debt. I mean, majorly in debt. There was no hope. The creditor was actually coming to take her only two sons away. So she, she lost her husband. She's, she's a, a, a mama bear with, with no helper. And someone's coming to take her children away and sell them into slavery. The anguish that that mother must have felt. Her heart had to have been totally broken. It looked hopeless. But praise God, you know, with God there is nothing impossible. And in, in verse 1 it says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. I can just hear her voice as I'm reading that. She, she's just like, you know, there's, a, there's a, a heart of desperation there. She's like, something needs to be done. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went, went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought in the vessels with, uh, to her. And she poured it out. Now it came to pass that when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And, and he said to her, There is not any vessel. There, 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 is, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. I think that her sons went and they gathered all the vessels they could find. There wasn't any left in the neighborhood. You know, they, the, this, this woman, this mama bear, cried out for her children and God rescued them. Amen? And that's what mama bears do. They will give their life for their children. They will cry out for their children. I mean, I'll tell you, um, God answers prayer, but boy, when it comes to the prayer of a mama bear, man, they're persistent, they're strong, and they're standing for the life of their children. Amen. There's just something about the prayer of a mama bear. It <clears throat> chokes me up a little bit. Well, I'm kind of extra sensitive to it. <laughs> What's going on with me? What's going on? Praise God for, for godly moms. Amen. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. This other story, it's, it's all in the same chapter. It, this is a story of, of a husband and wife who were taking care of Elijah and, and they were in, they, they set up a room and they, they set up a bed for him and they fed him. And it was the, it was the wife's idea. And, and what happened was, the, you know, Elijah, what he said was, he said, is there anything I can do for you? You know, I know kings. I know the army. You know, is there anything you need? What do you need? And she, she was gracious. She's like, I'm, I'm with my own people. I'm fine. And, uh, and, and let me get into the story because it'll explain it all. But, but God was taking care of her. She, she just turned into a mama bear. Says, now it happened one day that, Eli that Elijah went to um, Shunem, where there was a notable woman. And she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed by, that he would turn in there and eat some bread, eat some food. So, so she... She basically she opened up her house to him. 
She opened up her house to him to feed him anytime he was hungry. He, he could go by. Anytime he was tired, he could, he could sleep there. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make... What a wise woman, I'm telling you. Thank God for godly wives, too. <laughs> Please, let us make a small upper room on, on the wall. And let us put a bed for him there, and a table, and a chair, and a lampstand. So that, um, so it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there, and he turned into the upper room, and lay down there. Then he said to Get Gehazi, his servant, call the, the Shunammite woman. When, when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to her, Say now, say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Amen. She had a heart to give. She was a a godly woman. She just might be a blessing. Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is, what then is it to be done for you? And Gehazi, Gehazi uh, answered, he said, actually, I mean, this man... You know, he messed up a little bit later on. But, but at that moment, he was real sensitive. And he said, he said, actually, she has no son. And her husband is old. So, so he said, call her. And when he called her, she stood at the doorway. And he said to her, he said, about this time, no, I'm not reading, I'm going to paraphrase her. About this time next year, you're going to have a son. And she said, you know, don't lie to me. I mean, it, it sounded way beyond. She was barren. And he said, a year from now, you will have a son. And a year from that point, she had a son. And the son grew. And the son, one day the son was, was uh, going out to see his father in the field. And, and when he was speaking to his father, he, he had a headache. He's like, oh, my head. My head hurts, Dad. My head hurts. So, so what, what his father said was he, he got one of his workers to carry his son back to the house. And the mom was with her son. And, and she was with him and, and holding him. And while she was holding him, he died. Talk about a broken heart. A mom's broken heart. The thing that, that went to her mind was she, she put her son down on the prophet's bed. And she went, she said, get me a mule. Get me one of the men. We're going to the prophet. And as they were going to the prophet, they took off. She said, we're going to go as fast as we can. We're going to the prophet. They show up with the prophet. And, and the prophet asks her, so, so how are you doing? She's like, fine. How's your husband? Fine. How's your son? And... and and, uh, you know, it came down to it. She said, you know, my son, he died. And she expected the prophet to go and deliver her son. And, and so what the prophet said, he had Gehazi with him. And he said, I'm going to send my servant. And he's going to lay my staff on your son and he'll rise up. And, and the interesting thing is, is she's like, I'm not leaving here without you. <laughs> the, the, the prophet's going to send his assistant and she's like, uh-uh, Mama Bear. I'm not leaving this place without your presence. You're coming with us. And so Ge Gehazi, he, he went ahead of them and he did as he was instructed and he, he put the staff on a little boy on his head and he came back with a report nothing happened. Well, that's a wise woman. She's like, mm. I'm getting the prophet. He's coming to my house. I am not leaving with him. It kind of reminds me of Moses, you know, Moses going to the promised land. And he's saying, Lord, if you don't come with me, I'm not, I'm not leaving this place. You know, you, you've got to come with me. And so they show up there, and Elisha goes into the room. 
And he's praying. And he lays on top of the boy. I mean, his eyes to eyes, mouth to mouth. I think this is the first time mouth to mouth resuscitation was mentioned in the Bible. <laughs> uh, and, and he just laid on the boy. And nothing happened. And then he went and he laid on, he cried out to God. He laid on the boy again. And the boy's body got warm. But he wasn't completely rejuvenated. But one more time, he laid on the boy. And the, the boy sneezed seven times. I don't know what that was all about. But he sneezed seven times. And all of a sudden, life came back into him. Amen. <laughs> and she got her son back. That was an incredible thing. She was a mama bear. She wasn't going to settle for anything less than the best. Amen. She fought for the life of her child. And she came out victorious. Amen. 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 We've looked at three women in the Bible who were mama bears. Who, who, who wouldn't give up. They, they, they kept their faith. They're like, they, they laid their life on the line for their kids. That they, they put everything out there. And God was faithful. And I know there's mama bears in here. And there's some children that are struggling. And, and your heart's cried out to God. God, you need to touch my child. You need to, to, to minister to them. And you've cried out to God. I'm telling you, you're a mama bear. Things are going to change. God is going Amen. to work a miracle Amen. in the life of your children. Amen. Amen. Amen? God is so good. You know, and, and the thing is, is, you know, Jesus, when He was on the cross, His mom was on His mind. He was thinking about His mom. And, and we can see this in John 19, verse 26 through 27. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, which we all, we all know was John. John was the youngest disciple. He was the youngest. I can imagine what John, when John hung out with Jesus, I know like uh, whenever I was little, there were kids that would come over to our house all the time. And they were like, my mom would feed them. And, you know, they, they actually were like, part of the family. Mm -hmm. and, and I can see John spending time with uh, Jesus' mom, spending time with Mary, building a relationship with her. And so Jesus looked and he saw a mother grieving, a mother whose heart was broken, seeing her very son on the cross. And he had concern for his mom. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that, from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home and took care of her. She, he adopted her as his own mother. And she adopted him as her own son. Amen. Wow. Amen. Just want to say, you know, praise God for godly mothers. We call them blessed. And the last thing I would like to say about this is happy Mother's Day. We love you mothers. Have a great day. God bless. Yeah. <sighs>